يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم الحمد لله once again we are present here to learn about some important aspects of deen and inshallah today's <coughs> chapter and today's discourse will be regarding congregation jama'at reciting salah with jama'at with congregation and we shall begin with a hadith <coughs> recorded in Bukhari and Muslim and the narrator is Adil Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala who stated the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that a person who prays salah with congregation with jama'ah compared to that individual who prays alone and he will get sawab 27 times more subhanallah so 27 times more reward for that person who prays with jama'ah compared to that individual who prays on his own in muslim sharif abu daud sharif and many other books of hadith it has been recorded as abdullah bin mas'ud ta'ala he narrates that the Messenger وسلم, has said that a person does not neglect his salah unless he's a munafiq, unless he is a hypocrite. Now, who is a hypocrite? It has been said that the hypocrites, the munafiq, they shall be in the lowest part of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. So, that person who does not offer his salah but neglects his salah, then he is a munafiq. Even to the extent an ill person will attend his salah, even if he's dragged, if he's carried between two people. This was the state of the companions. If the, the people, if a companion, if a person was ill, then two people used to carry him towards the masajid. And, and you shall see examples of this in the life of Awliya Kiram, Imam Ahl Sunnah Ala Hazrat When he was ill and before his demise, he was so ill, yet he had so much love for congregation that he used to say to his muridin, his disciples, that carry me to the masjid. And the messenger said, Allah was himself, when he fell ill, he commanded the companions to carry him so much that his feet were dragging across the floor, but he did not miss his salah with jama'ah. This is how much importance the messenger said, Allah وسلم, has placed on reciting salah with jama'ah. And it has been said, a person who prays at home without any valid reason, then he has missed a sunnah. And whoever misses a sunnah, then it is likely he will grow astray. And in the narration, it's been said, whoever misses a sunnah, it is likely he will go into the depths of kufr. Allah Akbar. So this is why these kind of atmospheres, these kind of environments are so important. We sometimes question, what is that the need to go to the masjid? What is the need to go to these gatherings? Well, according to this hadith, if we neglect such gatherings, neglect such congregations, then what happens? We pray on our homes and we are outside that atmosphere, we are outside that environment. And then what happens? We are obviously seduced by other things, by other media, by other people, and then we are led astray. That is why these environments, this mahol, okay, this environment is so important. Even if you come to the masajid, okay, you will meet your Muslim brethren, you will meet the Imam, okay, you will learn something, you will recite in, with a congregation, and that is a means of purifying the heart and creating love between the Muslims. Therefore, we should never miss the sunnah, because in, as per this hadith, if a person misses a sunnah, like congregation, then it is likely he will go astray and lead astray. As the Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, and he narrates, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Whosoever performs complete wuzu, and we mentioned this a few weeks ago, what is complete wuzu? Complete wuzu means to offer all the sunnah actions, to do wuzu correctly, slowly, calmly, without speaking to anyone whilst performing wuzu. Whosoever performs complete wuzu, and then he embarks for salah to the masjid, and he prays with jama'ah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of his sins. Subhanallah. In Tabrani, as the Abu Umar and he narrates that the Messenger وسلم, has said that if a person knew, if an individual knew what lies for him if he was to miss his salah, then he would drag himself, he would drag his heels to come to the masjid to pray namaz with jama'ah. If he knew of the punishment or if he knew what lies for him if he was to miss jama'ah, 
and he would drag himself to come to the masjid and perform the with jama'ah. Remember, we're talking about jama'ah here. We're not even talking about misses, missing salah altogether. These are the, you know, the wa'id, okay? the uh, warnings that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us for missing jama'ah. So he can have a, you know, he can try and understand the punishment for those who missed namaz altogether. In Tirmidhi Sharif, Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala, he narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that whosoever, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recites namaz with jama'ah for 40 consecutive days without missing takbir e ula What is takbir e ula takbir e ula is the takbir that Imam recites Allahu Akbar when he enters the state of salah. Whosoever performs namaz with jama'ah, with congregation for 40 days constantly, consecutively, then there are two glad tidings for this individual. The first is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jahannam haram for him. He will be given the glad tidings for not entering Jahannam. And secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from hypocrisy, from nifaq of the heart. And as I said, hypocrisy is the lowest form a person can be um, engulfed in. Now, just to give you an example of the import, you know, how low hypocrisy is, if we open the Holy Quran, is the Holy Quran present here? If we open the Holy Quran after Surah Fatiha, which surah do we, uh, comes after Surah Fatiha? Surah Baqarah. Okay. Surah Baqarah. And Hadith Sabif. <coughs> In Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitabula Rai Bafi, Hudalil Mutatin. Alladina Yuminuna Mil Rai. So then, well, first, then second, three, and then four verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believers. And then he says, Inna Ladina Kafaru Sawa Un Alayhim Amdar Tahum Amlam Tun Dirhum La Yuminun. And the next two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the kuffar. From there onwards, an entire ruku, an entire section is dedicated towards the munafiqun, towards the hypocrites. So you see the severity of the hypocrites and how far down they lie. So this, is, this just gives us an indication as to the maqam and how low the hypocrites are. And we should never ever do any actions whatsoever which makes us from that group. Even though we do it unintentionally or we do it out of neglect, but still we should try and abstain from any action which resembles that of a munafiq, of a hypocrite. Because the Messenger <coughs> said that on the Day of Judgment, you will be raised with those whom you love. And we don't love the hypocrites. Okay? But we should make sure we never do actions like those of the hypocrites. In Abu Dawud Sharif, and the narrator said Abu Hurairah and he narrates that the Messenger said Allah has said that if a person performs a complete wudu, he offers all the sunnah actions, all the mustahab actions, and then he attends the masjid. Now this happens to many of us, okay? He does wudu and then he attends the masjid. And when he enters the masjid, he finds that people have finished their salah. The Imam has finished his salah. Then, inshallah, he will get the same reward as those people who prayed behind the Imam. Why? Because his, his intentions were correct. He intended to come out of his house and go to the masjid so he can pray behind the Imam. But unfortunately, for some reason or the other, he missed Jama'ah. But because of the sincerity of his intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the same reward as though he prayed behind the Imam. So, my dear brothers, intentions again are very important. And when we depart from the house, we should always make a good intention. In Imam Ahmad, it has been recorded as it will be in Ka'ab is the narrator. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa after Fajr salah he completed the salah and then he turned around and asked the companions that where is, where is such and such a person? The companion said, he is not present, Ya Rasulullah. Again he said, where is such and such a person? Again the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa he is not present. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that these two salah, meaning Isha and Fajr, are difficult for the hypocrites. If they knew the reward of praying salah with jama'ah and the reward of fajr and isha, then they would drag themselves to come to the masajid. And then he continued and he said that the first saf, the first straw, is like the row of the angels. And if you knew the reward of praying in the first straw, then you would draw lots. Allahu Akbar. And what do we do when we enter the masjid? We sit right at the back. We do not come to the front. 
But all the mercy descends on the front. The Messenger ﷺ has likened the first straw to the roar of the angels. So whenever we come to the masjid, we should not think, oh, Haji Sahib is in the first row. Yeah? Bohat bada Sheikh Bandaya. Yeah? He's, look at him. Yeah? A great, uh, he thinks he's really pious. He's sat in the first row praying. No. You have not realized the importance and the reward of reciting namaz in the first row. So we should rush. Okay? As the Prophet said, he would draw lots. Yeah? Every namaz, you would you know, pick up straws or draw you know, your names from a hat that who would recite salah in the first row. So it is important that whenever we come to the masjid, we try our utmost best to recite salah in the first sub. Now one very, very important ruling here with regards to those people who bring children with them. When I say children, I mean children who are below the age of uh, maturity or puberty. Now the ruling is that when the parents, the father, when he's in the row, or if it's any other child, we should make sure that children below the age of puberty should not be in between the subs but you place them on the side of the rows or towards the back because this has been verified from many ahadith as well. Now if a father wishes to pray with his son so he can behave himself, then they should go to the ends of the rows to pray his salah. Okay, so if a father has come early, then he should come to, and he wishes to pray in the first surf, then he should try and especially these massages where the qibla is oriented towards the um, corner and there's less space in the corner, therefore the parents should um, go with their children towards the ends and this way everybody is happy and satisfied but children below the age of puberty they should either pray salah on the ends or towards the back and there should be no children in between the saf because this distracts people and children <coughs> they do not understand fully what namaz was salah is so you have probably seen children they are swaying from side to side or they are looking here and there and this distracts people from their salah therefore the scholars have said they should place them on the corners or towards the back and a very important ruling for our parents. So I hope inshallah you take heed from this. In Muslim Sharif, as the Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, he narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, that if a person prays salah, if a person prays isha with jama'ah, then it is as though he has performed worship equal to half the night. And if he performs namaz of fajr with jama'at, then it is as though he has worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the night. SubhanAllah. Yeah, the reward. But obviously he has to pray Isha the same day. And on the following day he has to pray Fajr with Jama'ah. And only then will, be, will it be classed as a full night. SubhanAllah. And we all know, if I was to ask you, go and pray, worship Allah the whole night. It's not easy. It's difficult. Your concentration will um, go elsewhere within a few minutes. But here we are getting, SubhanAllah, reward so easily. Just by offering our Salah with Jama'ah in Isha and also in Fajr. Imam Ahmad, it has been recorded that the Messenger wasallam, said that if it wasn't for the women and children, Allah Akbar, my head stood up when I listened to this hadith, that if it wasn't for the women and children, then I would establish Isha or I would establish my uh, Salah and I would command the youth to go to the houses of the Muslims and those people who do not come for congregation, I would command them to be burnt. Who is saying this, first of all? Try and understand who is saying this. The mercy of all mankind is saying this. Why do you think he's saying this? Because there is importance in salah. There is importance in congregation. So from this we ascertain how important it is to pray and offer our salah with congregation, with jama'ah. Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala He, after Fajr salah, he went to Sayyidina Sulaiman bin Abu because he did not uh, attend the Fajr Salah. So he went to, the, to his house and he saw his mother and he spoke and he asked his mother that where was Sulaiman in Fajr today? Allah Akbar. Yeah. If they didn't attend the prayers, the companions, as Umar Farooq Azam was a Khalif, okay, the most important, you know, important person of, his, of the Muslim Ummah at the time, he's going out to inquire why people were not attending Salah. So the mother of Sulaiman, he, she said, that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was offering his night vigil prayer. He was worshipping you. He was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the night. After his worship, he felt a bit tired and he fell asleep. And because he fell asleep, he missed his Fajr salah. As Umar radiallahu he said, it, was, it, had been, it would have been better if he rested the night and then came to the masjid and prayed Fajr with congregation. And this is why this obviously substantiates the previous hadith. Where worshipping or praying Fajr with Jama'ah is equal to half the night's worship. 
or if he prayed Isha and Fajr with Jama'ah, then he will get the reward of offering a full night worth of worship. SubhanAllah. Through Shifari Allah, Masabi Adam, Sayyidina Muhammad, Ma'adil and Juli, Wal Karam, Munali, he was submitted to Barik, Masalim, Sali, Alayhi Salatu, Masalam, and Alayhi Salatu. It has been reported in Abu Dawood, and the narrator is Ibn Abbas, the Messenger of Allah has said that whosoever, whosoever heard the Adhan, and without a valid reason, he did not come to the masjid to offer namaz with jama'ah, with congregation, then his namaz would not be accepted. So the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah what is a valid reason? The Messenger وسلم, said two. The first is fear. Fear of something. Fear of an oppressor. Fear of an animal. Fear of somebody. If I go outside the house, somebody will shoot me, will kill me. Fear. And the fear means he has complete conviction that if he goes out, he will be hurt. Now, just a mere um, thought that, oh, I'm frightened that the weather might turn cloudy and it might start raining. That is not a valid reason, valid excuse. And the second reason is illness. So if he's so ill that he cannot come out of his bed, then he can miss congregation. But many people, they have a headache and they miss salah altogether. Yeah, remember the headaches, yeah, the companions, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they used to endure headaches the most. So once you're, when you're experiencing a headache, think that I am actually, actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the opportunity to practice the sunnah of a prophet. So headaches are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. But a headache should not be a reason for us to miss our salah. Okay? Obviously, and jama'ah as well. So illness, a severe illness where a person cannot leave his house, then he is forgiven for not, not praying with jama'ah, but he should also he should at least pray in, his, in the confinement of his house. The Messenger وسلم, has said that if in a village there are even three people, then they should still establish salah. Because if they do not, then shaitan will attack these people. And the Messenger وسلم, gave an example of a herd of sheep. When a herd, when sheep are in a herd together, then a wolf will not attack the sheep. However, if there's a lone sheep which wanders around, then the wolf will attack that sheep. In the same way, if we offer our salah individually, then shaitan will attack us because we are not unified. If we pray our salah together with unity, then because of this bond, it is very difficult for the shaitan to break us apart. <coughs> So you, Salah with Jama'ah creates this bond and unity which exists between the Muslims, which should exist between the Muslims. And that is why praying with your Muslim brothers it eliminates many, many hatred, many, many uh, you know, defects of the heart like jealousy, like enmity, like hatred towards each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessing of Jama'ah congregation removes these from our hearts. So you'll find that these small things, yeah? we always look at the global, the big picture, that oh, why is this happening, why is that happening? But ultimately, it starts from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, لا يغير الله ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will not change a nation until the individual people who form that nation do not change themselves first. So the question is, we should start changing ourselves, then we should see the societies change. Therefore, all these things should apply to us first, to us individuals first. And then we, let's look at the bigger picture. So the finger of blame should always point towards ourselves and we should make sure that we always, you know, um, taking part in good acts and virtuous acts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels, they send durood and blessings upon the people who stand in the first saf. So the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what about the second saf? Again the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa repeated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends blessings upon those in the first saf. And then the companions said, well, Ya Rasulullah, what about the second self? And then the messenger said, also said, yes, the second self as well. And then he continued saying, that straighten your rows and join the shoulders. Okay? This hadith is actually in Imam Ahmad and the narrator is Abu Huraira. He says, he narrates this hadith. So he says, straighten your rows and join the shoulders. Now this um, removes the notion of those people who join the feet. Okay, if you join the feet, then you cannot join the shoulders. But in this hadith, it is clear the messenger commanded us to join the shoulders. So when we offer, when we stand in salah, we should make sure our shoulders are joined and meeting one another. And the Prophet continued, and be gentle with your brethren. Okay, when he said be gentle, give each other space. 
If there's you know, a, a crowd behind you, then move along and tighten and squeeze yourselves and give each other space. Because the Messenger وسلم, said that if there are gaps in between the sufuf, in between the rows, then the shaitan passes through you like a small sheep, you know, a uh, young sheep that's between the herd. You know, you see him passing, walking around them. That's how shaitan lingers and mingers amongst you if there are spaces in between yourselves. So we should make sure we close all gaps and our shoulders are physically touching the person who is stood next to us. And also the Messenger وسلم, said that if we stand close together, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove our differences. If we don't, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will instill differences and dissension amongst you. So one of the reasons that we have ikhtilaf is that you know we do not stand close together in sufuf. As I said, it is these small things that we fail to implement fail to act upon that is causing these problems. So for Muslims, we need to concentrate on the small things. And then when we perfected our small things, we shall change, we shall see the change happening in our societies, in our communities. And finally, the Messenger وسلم, has said that be like the rows of the angels, meaning complete the first rows first. Okay? What happens is um, we form the first row, there's some gaps in the end, and we start forming the second rows. Prophet said, no, complete the first rows and then start the second rows. Because we should be like the angels where they all stand together in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in general, these are the hadith concerning jama'ah, concerning congregation. And like I said before, these punishments or the warnings given to us by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning jama'ah should give us an idea regarding the punishments for those people who miss salah entirely. So we should make sure that we are offering our salah punctually and also we offer our salah with jama'ah as much as possible and we do not deviate from the, from the true path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly give myself the tawfiq and all of us to pray namaz with jama'ah continuously and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from the practice of the shaitan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al Anbiya wa al Mursaleen, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al Akhirati hasana wa qina adab al Nar. Allahumma zukna ilm al Nafi'a wa riskana halala and tayyib al Wasi'a wa amalam wa taqabalam wa shifa min kulida wa salallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahmatullah.